Hello guys. Next we'll talk about James Joyce's Ulysses. This is the second part of the video series on James Joyce. You're looking at some book covers of James Joyce's uh, Ulysses. This is a Martello Tower where the novel begins. And you see the Dubliners in Ulysses. Ulysses is a 1922 published novel. It was published in book form in 1922. Before that, it was serially published. And it has been hailed as the most important novel of the 20th century. It was a phenomenal success. Even though initially people did not understand the greatness of Ulysses, it became eventually a phenomenal success. And it shows the city of Dublin on one day, 16 June 1904. This is a novel that is deeply uh, rooted in mythology, but this novel ironically does not show us the greatness of any mythological character. No, there are no heroes here. There are just very ordinary middle class Dubliners here with all their problems and uh, frailties and incompleteness. And uh, they are just wandering in the city of London. Not knowing, to what, not knowing what to do with their lives. That is the beauty of this novel. It is about uh, the, the pettiness of life, the mundaneness of life. Now, uh, the protagonist, Stephen Daedalus, is a carryover from a portrait of the artist as a young man. And uh, this is a novel where, ironically, the unity of time and place are observed. You, it, it highlights the fact that this is not a tragedy or this is not a classical work. And it appears in 18 chapters and episodes. There are three parts in the novel. Homeric divisions are there. And these 18 chapters are spread over three parts. 18 chapters are like 18 episodes. It was first serially published in the American magazine Little Review in 23 installments starting from 1918. And uh, at the beginning, for the, for the first 13 installments, the authorities did not pay any attention. But after the 13th episode, the publishers of Little Review were put to trial and fined. Because the unconventionality of the novel came to the notice of the authorities and copies of the magazine were seized for publishing obscene material. It was famously banned. Uh, in both US and UK. Finally, the novel was published in book form after extensive revision in 1922 by Shakespeare and company. The novel was banned in many parts of the world and allowed the publication in the US. That means the ban was lifted in the US only in 1933 and after that only in the UK in 1936. Now, there is a strong parallel between Joyce's Ulysses and uh, Homer's Odyssey. It is like a rewriting of Homer's Odyssey in a way, but in a very uh, oblique and ironic way. The hero here in Ulysses is not a battle-scarred adventurer, but an ordinary man dealing with the tribulations of early 20th century urban life. Leopold Bloom <coughs> is uh, Ulysses or Odysseus here. And uh, uh, Stephen Daedalus is his son, Taylor Macus, And Molly Bloom is the uh, wife of Taylor, uh, Leopold, I mean, wife of Leopold Bloom. And she parallels Penelope. Uh, while Penelope was chased to her husband's memory and uh, remembered, sorry, uh, maintained her chastity, uh, Molly Bloom is freely uh, having extramarital relationship with her manager. Now, the divisions of the novel are Homeric. The Telemachiad is the first part of the novel. It comprises three episodes, episodes 1 to 3. Uh, in the morning of the day, 16th June 1904, you see Stephen's need for paternal care. Stephen has a father, Simon Daedalus, and Simon is the friend of our Leopold Bloom. But Stephen does not identify with his father and he cannot uh, appreciate his father. And he is searching for paternal care of father figure and he is finding it in Bloom. It mirrors the search of Telemachus for Odysseus. 
the odyssey is the second part it is the big part episodes from 4 to 15 and it shows odysseus and bloom's wanderings odysseus in mythology bloom in uh, J- joyce's novel the last part is also only three episodes the nostos or the return it is the hero's reunion with his faithful or in this case faithless wife uh, that happens in the house of leopold bloom the nostos or the return is the third part so these are the three parts of joyce's ulysses which parallel uh, homer's uh, odyssey now the plot of ulysses as you might know it is set in one day and night in the lives of three dubliners and uh, uh, it deals with the story of stephen daedalus he is a young writer he is back from paris he is an ex catholic he has given up his catholicism and he is an unsuccessful writer okay and there is an incident in the there is a section in the part in the novel when he talks about his uh, stories or novels his works with uh, letters from the alphabet have you read f have you read the book f but i prefer q but i i i read w like that f q w he uses these letters to uh, refer to his novels that are anon- i mean not a- of any character these novels are Uh, have not made any mark in the world that is the meaning and stephen daedalus is a very insightful man a very philosophical man and he is known by the nickname kinch k i n c h he has just lost his mother one year ago and he is attempting to uh, gain a foothold in the dublin literary world leopold bloom is a middle aged uh, part jewish advertising agent and they are living in a dublin that is highly antisemitic then both stephen and leopold bloom are like outsiders in dublin and uh, leopold bloom uh, the novel starts sorry the story starts in his house uh, that is in 7 eccles street and he lives with his uh, wife uh, molly bloom he has a daughter uh, whose letter he reads and his son has died Uh, and leopold bloom is an advertising agent and in the novel you see him canvassing for uh, an adv- advertisement and he is traveling in dublin and uh, going around dublin doing his chores and he's postponing his return home because he knows that his wife is probably having a uh, sexual affair with her manager and he does not want to go home too soon and meet them so he is postponing his uh, journey to his house that is what you see in the novel then the character of bloom is inspired by aaron etor schmitz the author of zeno's conscience please uh, take a re- take a look at this author and this um, book uh, you can get some extra information if you do your extra research now uh Molly Bloom has been married to Leopold for nearly 16 years and she is visited by her manager she is a singer and her singing tour in Belfast is coming up and uh, she is visited by Hugh Blazes Boylan and they start a sexual affair on this day now let me tell you the story of uh, Ulysses and the analysis in detail i will not be dealing with all the things in the powerpoint the powerpoint is very crisp but i will talk to you about the story and its analysis without the powerpoint uh hour by hour the day 16 june 1904 is discussed in the novel uh, at first you see the morning hours 8 am to 10 am here you see first stephen daedalus and then uh, leopold bloom separately after that from 11 o'clock onwards their story is uh, told in one go and they eventually meet also when the novel begins uh, we see buck and uh, stephen talking who is buck buck mulligan he is a medical student and a friend of uh, stephen daedalus they are talking in martello tower where they live they are both rent, uh, living on rent in this house uh, th- this is a tower okay a stone tower i have been there this uh, this is called joyce's tower now and uh, it is a museum now 
in martello tower uh, buck mulligan and stephen are talking on the roof uh, and uh, buck is a very hilarious young man and he is making fun of everything and mocking and stephen doesn't like him very much he is parodying catholicism and uh, singing the ballad of joking jesus and uh, he uh, has invited a british man uh, an english man haines to stay there and uh, haines has been troubling uh stephen stephen doesn't like haines living there because at night stephen uh, couldn't sleep because haines was moaning about some black panther and stephen is a little unhappy with buck because buck has talked very uh, disrespectfully about stephen's mother who has just died St buck uh, buck also in turn uh, makes fun of stephen and uh, blames him for not taking care of his mother properly and stephen is looking very uncouth in appearance he is uh, wearing uh, bad clothes and looking very dirty and buck mocks him by showing him a cracked mirror which stephen compares to irish art this black sorry broken mirror smashed mirror is an important motif and buck uh, tells him that together they can make ireland as cultured as greece was in one time <laughs> and uh, then uh, buck goes downstairs singing a song this song is uh, wb h's poem who goes with fergus incidentally this song that uh, buck sings and goes is the song that uh, stephen sang to his dying mother stephen sang this song to his dying mother and uh, after this uh, stephen leaves for work stephen is a school teacher okay and uh, while he is leaving buck asks him to leave the house key and to meet him at the pub in the noon time at 12:30 uh, buck will be there in a pub that they frequent and stephen should meet him there he tells stephen stephen goes to garnet dc's boys school this dc is the owner and he is an ignorant and very narrow minded anti semitic man okay and stephen does not like his job there anyway he teaches one history lesson there at 10 am and uh, then he goes to dc to get his wages dc's ignorance and narrow mindedness is very clear in the conversation and dc gives him gives stephen one lecture on life before he gives the money and then stephen uh, should help dc because dc has written a letter to the editor one article uh, very patriotic article about what topic about cattle disease <laughs> and dc wants to publish it in two newspapers so stephen is going to help him uh, by meeting his acquaintances he will get it published for him and after his work uh, stephen goes out walking on the beach it is the sandy mound strand uh, in the afternoon leopold bloom also will come and sit there sandy mount strand he is walking there and thinking about his past and he also composes a poem stephen uh, composes a poem in his mind and uh, then he uh, writes he tears a piece of the paper from our dc's letter remember dc has written a letter uh, and to the editor and uh, this man uh, was going to publish that letter he now tears a piece of uh, paper from dc's letter and writes down his poem on it so that is stephen's uh, life from 8 am to 10 am in the morning of 16th june now uh, we have to go to 7 eccles street and see what is happening with our leopold bloom there uh, leopold bloom is making breakfast here okay he is making liver for himself and there is a cat he is making uh, breakfast for the cat also uh, food for the cat also he is giving and he has made a toast for his wife molly who is upstairs in her bed we know that she is upstairs in her bed because the uh, bed springs are making some sound when she moves and he takes her mail and breakfast to her and she has got a, a letter opened already it is from blazes boylan we already know he is the sleazy manager of her singing tour and uh, he is going to come and visit her at 4 pm she says leopold bloom immediately knows that she is going to start a sexual affair with him uh, they will have sex today he knows 
and uh, bloom uh, emerges in this opening scene as uh, opening scene not of the novel but of his story as a sympathetic and compassionate man he goes downstairs and reads a letter from his daughter milly and also uh, urinates in the um, toilet outdoors are our virginia wolf hated the scene she was very angry that james joyce wrote like this however uh, that scene is the end of the first part on bloom and then at 10 o'clock uh, bloom goes out and uh, he, where is he going he is going to the post office he picks up one amorous letter that he has got you know what he is doing he is writing he has an extramarital affair over letters he is writing to one woman who calls herself martha clifford god knows what her real name is and uh, he is posing as henry flower and they are exchanging uh, love letters after reading this letter he goes to uh, a pharmacist and he buys a soap for his wife and also orders her lotion there and then he goes to a catholic church come on he is a jew but he is desperately searching for some solace some uh, comfort in life and which he does not get in the catholic church anyway and uh, then uh, he meets a friend called bantam lions l y o n s and they talk and bantam lions misunderstands that this guy leopold bloom is giving him a tip on a horse race that is going to happen that afternoon anyway time is going on is wearing out and it is 11 am now uh, bloom and uh, bloom is wearing uh, black clothes okay remember he is going he is in mourning because he is going to a funeral and he is uh, riding with uh, friends Simon Dedel as our Stephen's father then Martin Cunningham Jack Power these are the friends and they are all going to uh, Paddy Dignam's funeral Paddy Dignam on the way uh, at the funeral that is Bloom thinks of uh, the death of his son Rudy remember i told you he had lost a son and also his father he thinks of he had committed suicide this uh, section is full of black humor actually the whole novel is hilarious it is full of black humor and it makes fun of irish people and their pretensions and um, the pettiness of metropolitan life in so many different ways and that's the funeral is over and now it is noon time 12 o'clock uh, our stephen uh, uh, sorry leopold bloom goes to uh, 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 the the office of uh, free man newspaper free man newspaper why he has come there is because he is negotiating the placement of an advertisement in the newspaper he is working for case k e y e s a liquor merchant and uh, the foreman at the uh, at the newspaper office says they are okay to keep the to put the advertisement if it will go on for 2 months but now leopold bloom has to go and ask the liquor merchant whether he is okay with it so he goes out when he goes out stephen arrives with dc's letter he has to get it published and uh, there are a lot of men in the office uh, including the editor uh, crawford miles crawford that is the name and uh, others they are all lazily discussing uh, idly discussing politics and other things there and uh, Stephen and the other men leave now. Bloom uh, has talked to uh, the editor, and uh, Crawford has rejected his proposal. In uh, Bloom was hoping to get the newspaper there, uh, article there, sorry, advertisement there in the newspaper, and the uh, editor Crawford has rejected it also. See, Bloom is a failure. He is not a very successful newspaper agent or anything, and uh, then. uh the afternoon uh, becomes 1 pm uh, afternoon begins and bloom now uh, meets a former fian- a former uh, lover her name is uh, josie breen or mrs breen and they talk about their acquaintance mina purefoy who has gone into labor in the maternity hospital she is going to deliver a child and uh, now our bloom wants lunch it is 1 o'clock so he goes to one restaurant and then he decides to leave because he doesn't want heavy food so he goes to uh, byernes pub byernes 
I don't know how it is pronounced. That is the uh, name of the owner of the pub. He goes to that pub and uh, eats one uh, cheese sandwich and glass of wine he drinks. That is light lunch. At this time, he sits there and remembers uh, how he made uh, made love to Molly for the first time. That was in Howarth, H-O-W-T-H, Howarth, one place that appears in Finnegan's Wake also. And from there, he walks out. And as he is walking towards the National Library, can you guess whom he meets? He sees uh, our blazers boiling in the distance, the manager of Molly Bloom. He does not want, Bloom does not want to talk to Boylan. So he quickly slips into the National Museum. He was going to the National Library and quickly he slips into the National Museum now. So that there ends the forenoon, now the afternoon. It is now 2 p.m. And in the National Library, where our Bloom was going, Stephen is talking to some people about his Hamlet theory. He has created a theory about Shakespeare and Hamlet. And uh, like uh, Sigmund Freud had created a theory, he is talking to, uh, who, who he is talking to? The poet A.E. A.E. is the surname of George Russell. Have you heard his name before? Yeah, he was the man who encouraged Joyce to publish his first story in Irish Homestead. A.E. And the three librarians are also listening to our Stephen's theory. And you know what happens? A.E. is an idealist and he is dismissive of Stephen's theory. He doesn't care for it. And uh, our Stephen owes some money to A.E. Okay. And Stephen uh, humorously says, A.E. I owe you. A.E. I owe you. What is it? That is the vowels in English language. At this time at the National Library, who arrives? Stephen's friend Buck Mulligan. And he comes and asks Stephen why he did not come to the pub and uh, take Stephen away. They leave. And when they leave, they meet Bloom because he had just come there. Uh, he had come to get a copy of the uh, newspaper ad and uh, they just meet. Uh, Stephen, Stephen and his friends meet uh, our Leopold Bloom. And then at 3 p.m., at 3 p.m., there is no story happening. There is suddenly a host of characters you meet. Lots of characters, including Stephen Daedalus' sisters. Uh, and 18 episodes. Remember, the novel itself has 18 episodes. Now, in this 3 p.m. chapter, there are uh, 18 episodes suddenly showing uh, without any plot development. That is what happens. It is like a... My uh, reflection of the novel itself. And then it is 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. the setting is Ormond Hotel. There is a bar there. And our Simon Daedalus, father of Stephen, is sitting with some friends. They are Ben Dollard, Matt Lenehan, etc. Our Blaze Boylan is also there. Boy Boylan. Blaze Boylan is also there. Uh, Boylan is meeting somebody else for lunch. And Bloom comes and Bloom saw Boylan's car outside and then he also sees Boylan leaving. Bo where is Boylan going? It is already 3 p.m. and uh, 4 p.m. and Boylan is going to meet Molly Bloom. So uh, Bl Bloom does not uh, talk to Boylan. He misses Boylan and then quietly he goes inside and sits down. He spends some time at the hotel. At this time, what is happening there? Uh, our Stephen Daedalus and his friend are singing. Uh, the, the two men are singing and uh, Dollard is singing. Not Stephen, sorry. Simon Daedalus and Dollard are singing. And um, uh, our uh, Bloom sits there and listens to it. Then he goes out and posts a letter that he has written for Martha. Now it is 5 p.m. And Bloom goes to Barney Kiernan's pub. And there the plan is to meet Martin Cunningham. We met him before. He was there at the funeral. Whose funeral? Dignam's funeral, remember? And now, Bloom has come there to meet Cunningham and talk, to, talk about Dignam family finances, their property, how it will be shared, etc. But Cunningham has not arrived there. So, he is waiting. Bloom is waiting for his friend. At this time, something happens. What happens? There is an Irish nationalist at uh, Kiernan pubs, Kiernan's pub and he is drunk. And you know what happens? He starts attacking Bloom's Jewishness. Remember, Bloom is a Jew. And Bloom doesn't quarrel with him. Bloom upholds peace and love. 
and cunningham's carriage suddenly comes and takes bloom away from the quarrel that is ha what happens at 5 pm and then after this there is sunset and at 8 pm you know what happens uh, our bloom has already visited mrs dignam the wife of the deceased man and he is sitting at sandy mound strand remember the beach uh, where uh, stephen daedalus was strolling in the morning yeah bloom is sitting there and watching uh, a couple of girls and some boys there is one gertie mcdowell one girl with some other boys and another girl and uh, there is a little exchange between them and bloom and uh, gertie notices that bloom is watching her and you know what this girl does she leans over a railing showing uh, her legs you know in a very provocative manner to bloom and bloom sits there and watches her and uh, later we come to realize that bloom secretly masturbated sitting there and he also dozed off very and now now it is 10 pm bloom uh, goes to maternity hospital to check how meena purefoy is doing remember meena uh, she was in labor and she is now struggling still she has not delivered she is struggling down that is upstairs downstairs what is happening do you know our stephen daedalus is sitting with some medical students remember buck maligan and others uh, and these medical students are drinking and talking about child birth and you know what our stephen does i mean uh, james joyce does james joyce the author makes an analogy of the development of english language and child bearing <laughs> and uh, bloom joins them actually bloom does not like they are making merry while this mina pure foy is struggling upstairs anyway bloom also joins them and um, at this time buck comes buck maligan was not there he comes and uh, the men go to burke's pub another pub is there burke burke's pub it is closing time and stephen Uh, gets his friend Lynch to go with him to the brothel area of the town. There is Bella Cohen's brothel. Uh, he wants to go there. Stephen takes Lynch. That is a friend from Portrait of the Artist. If you remember, Bloom knows that they are going to brothel, and he feels very protective about them. So he follows them at a distance. And uh, finally, at midnight, Bloom uh, locates Stephen and Lynch at Bella Cohen's brothel. Meanwhile, Bloom is also having some hallucinations because he is feeling guilty and remorseful. He gets a hallucination that he has been arrested and he has been put into trial, put to trial, but he doesn't know what is the crime that he committed. Are you following? And then Stephen, at this time, he meets at the brothel. Uh, Stephen is drunk and he imagines that he sees his mother's ghost and uh, flings his uh, arms at it. is walking stick at it and do you know what happens he breaks one chandelier there was one chandelier there and it gets broken now bella cohen is very angry the woman who runs the brothel is very angry she wants to call the police bloom uh, luckily saves stephen he runs after him and um, then he sees that bloom has quarreled with a british soldier and the british soldier knocked him out uh, stephen is lying there bloom finds that stephen is lying there unconscious somehow he uh, picks up stephen and gets him some coffee to uh, bring him to his senses and then takes him home now this is after midnight now towards the end of the novel we see 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the morning uh, what happens is stephen and bloom both arrive at bloom's house they drink hot chocolate and they talk about themselves their past and who they are what they are bloom asks stephen to stay stephen wants to go bloom asks him to stay but uh, stephen leaves and then he looks around and finds that boylan has indeed come there and uh, he doesn't mind he is at peace with his wife he is at peace with his world no problems he quick quietly climbs into his bed uh, with his wife and tells her about his day quickly and also tells her that he wants breakfast in bed the next morning now molly is surprised because he usually doesn't have breakfast in bed but anyway 
she uh, agrees to give him bre uh, breakfast in bed and then the last chapter the 18th chapter is molly's soliloquy molly is uh, thinking aloud and what is she thinking she is thinking about her childhood in gibraltar and uh, she is also thinking about how she had sex with boyle in that afternoon she is thinking about her singing career he, she wants glamour she wants money she wants to travel and uh, then she also thinks about steve and daedalus and at the end uh, she also remembers how she had made love to uh, her husband uh, her uh, sorry leopold bloom for the first time and this shows that she prefers bloom over boylan and the novel ends on a happy note it is a happy note at the end that you see did you just enjoy the story now uh, this is a comedy of multiple identities it is actually a comedy of multiple identities the characters hopes and fears longings and frustrations triumphs and defeats they are all uh, shown in the novel it is about ordinary people and their ordinary lives and uh, frustrations and triumphs there is nothing unusual about this story and uh, it employs stream of consciousness technique or interior monologue the novel moves easily between the narrator's words and the thoughts of a character remember stream of consciousness is a very important technique used by narrative technique used by the modernist writers and this novel presents both inner and outer worlds and mingled impressions and reflections of bloom as he wanders around dublin the novel shows the mingled impressions and reflections of bloom as well as stephen daedalus as they wander around uh, dublin where they are both outsiders as i told you the novel is a comic exploitation of the traditions of the novel it's like an anti novel it does not look like a traditional novel at all and uh, the first six episodes are interior monologues the seventh episode uses newspaper headlines it is very stylistically different from the ninth episode each episode has a distinctive style it's a compendium of many styles of comic fiction and the 10th episode breaks with narrative continuity the 11th uses language to mimic music and the 12th episode uh, is called cyclops it combines a monologue in dublin vernacular in spoken language of dublin vernacular uh, dublin and uh, it has interpolated parodies also kiernan's pub the 13th episode is a pastiche of romantic and magazine literature and interior monologue it's an amazing novel it's so different from any novel that you will have seen a lot of modernists had different different opinions about this novel t s eliot admired it Uh, especially the mythical method of ulysses he admired in the article he wrote about it in U ulysses order and myth he said i hold this book to be the most important expression which the present age has found virginia wolf regarded joyce as a kind of artistic double uh, because james joyce and virginia wolf were doing more or less the same thing but virginia wolf was dismissive of ulysses she did not did not like ulysses even though she appreciated james joyce because joyce and virginia wolf both revolted against what against realism traditional realism and they employed psychological realism she said that it is the work of a queasy undergraduate scratching his pimples ayo now d h lawrence famously attacked ulysses he also did not like ulysses because he wrote in a very different style i'm sorry i'm not one of the people who can read ulysses only bits i can read he said and uh, finnegan's wake is the next novel 1939 published in the year in which the second world war began it was written while living in paris remember he was living in paris he had uh, traveled in uh europe and he had come to paris joyce regarded this work as his magnum opus and he kept its title secret called it work in progress and joyce's fame was increasing at this time and he had a large team of helpers including samuel beckett samuel beckett was a scribe of james joyce 
However, lots of troubles he had at this time. Financial crises, eye troubles, his daughter's mental breakdown. Now, Finnegan's Wake has a plot which is uh, impossible to be narrated. It is non-linear and completely confusing, written in 17 chapters, in four sections. The novel is named after a street ballad. And the story is unimportant and even unclear. As in Ulysses, the incident at the heart of the book is sexual misdemeanor and its acceptance by one who is wronged. Remember, uh, a, a person speed, uh, cheating on her, his or her partner and being forgiven at the end. That is in Ulysses also. Look at this. At Phoenix Park, a married man watches two girls uh, urinating. And he is in turn watched by three soldiers. The soldiers spread the story, but the man is defended by his tolerant wife. This is what I understood from the internet summaries. I don't know this novel in first hand. I have not read this novel because it is impossible to read this novel. It's a very confusing novel. The story is not told in a straightforward manner. It is told over and over again in shorter and longer forms. Various versions including those of a homosexual encounter and incest are included. There are overtones of the biblical fall and the Charles Parnell story that is told in Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man also. Now the style of Finnegan's Wake. It is an unorthodox depiction of the year wicker family. Said in, uh, written in comic and experimental prose. Names and initials change identity. People become rivers or stones. Can you believe that? And uh, sometimes ideas are personified and people become personifications of ideas. The opening line is a sentence fragment. Now, look at this first line. Imagine this is a sentence and imagine I am cutting it here. The second part of the sentence becomes the first line in the novel. The first part of the sentence becomes the last line of the novel. This is how the novel is written. So the opening line is a sentence fragment which continues from the book's finished, uh, sorry, unfinished closing line. The closing line comes first and then opening line. <laughs> Making the work a never-ending cycle. This is the first line. Nothing you will understand. River run past Eve and Adam's from swerve of shore to bend of bay brings us by a commodious vicus of recirculation back to Howarth Castle environs. Even if Joyce wrote an ordinary sentence, we won't understand. And now he is writing a sentence like this. This is the opening line of the novel. It means something like the river runs past Adam and Eve's home by the shore and around the back to Howarth Castle and its surroundings. This is the meaning. And the last line is the keys to given away, alone, a last, a love, a long. The, the is the last line is the last word of Finnegan's wake. <laughs> What an experiment. And finally, let me show you the famed Marjorie Fitzgibbon statue of James Joyce with his walking stick in O'Connell Street in Dublin. Our Stephen Dadel has also walked with a walking stick, remember? So that brings us to the second video on James Joyce. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much.